Hey everyone, how are you doing? Today I'd like to talk about... Wait a minute, let me take this thing off. Today I'd like to talk about this thing. Virtual reality is still a niche market and mostly consists of gamers. Now, I do like playing games on the MetaQuest 3. I like classics such as Beat Saber, but also love playing both the Red Matter games. Highly recommend that. 11 VR for Table Tennis is also really cool. And also really liked A Fishman's Tale. But that's not what I want to talk about today. An interesting premise of a VR headset is that you can have an infinite number of monitors. And as a developer, I like that idea. But is it technically feasible? Can you use something like the Quest 3 for software development? Today we're going to find out. But before we dive in, if you want to learn more about how to design a piece of software from scratch, I have a free guide for you. You can get it at arion.com slash design guide. It contains the seven steps that I take whenever I design a new piece of software. And hopefully it helps you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in the past. Arion.com slash design guide. The link is also in the description of this video. Now, let's dive in. So here I'm in the Quest environment. I'm currently in pass-through mode. So this is actually the view that I typically see when I'm recording videos. That's the other side of the desk. So I'm now in the Quest environment. You see this interface here. I can move this around. It's quite easy. And if you want to do development in the Quest, I mean, it's not like a regular computer, right? So you can't, I don't know, open a terminal or install VS Code or anything like that. So you have to do things a bit differently. But what you can do is actually work from the browser. So what I've done here is I've started VS Code. You can actually run VS Code in your web browser directly by simply typing VS Code.dev. But what I'm actually using here is a GitHub code space. And what that does is that it actually starts a machine in the cloud that you can then run your code directly on. So that's actually a really cool way to work because that way you can also upload your settings to the cloud and it's going to remember those things. So you can also start this on another machine and then you simply work from there. And as you can see, I have a temporary URL here that I can start from. Of course, you need to log in if you want to access this, but that's basically how it works. So now I basically have my uh, VS Code editor open. You also see here at the bottom, I have a terminal, so I can actually work directly in that. Now you do have to make sure that you actually connect your mouse and your keyboard to the Quest. So you can do that via Bluetooth. I have my mouse connected here. It looks kind of huge. I'm not sure why it's this big, but uh, it works just the same as any regular mouse on your machine. It's just huge. So next to the mouse, I've also connected my Apple Magic Keyboard. And now I can simply type code directly here in the browser and this just works. And because I'm running this in a code space, I can actually run this code in the cloud. Like so, I simply press play like I would normally do. There's some settings that I still have to set up here, like creating a virtual environment. I haven't done that yet because I haven't used code spaces a lot. But this is basically how it works. And you can actually see the output of the program here. So that's pretty nice. Now, this doesn't work all that smoothly. Like, for example, if I want to move this thing here, I have to be really precise with the mouse and it doesn't really work all that well. So to me, this is not really an ideal setup. But there's still a couple of things that you can do in this particular setup. So basically, this is now a simple browser window, but you can actually add more. So if I add a second tab here and let's say I'm going to my... Uh, Discord server. So right now I'm in my Discord server, which if you haven't joined this yet, by the way, it's totally free. It's a really nice community. You can join via discord.arion.codes. I've also put the link in the description of the video. So you can switch between tabs this way, but what's actually cool is that you can drag this tab and move it over here. And now we have a separate window open here. Now it's the layout is not that great because it's kind of hard to read. But let me show you one more thing. So let's say next to this, you also want to look up some things on Stack Overflow. So let's also open that in a tab and then I can move that to the left. So now we have a pretty neat development setup where on the left we have Stack Overflow. So if I have any question, I can write that here. Here I have my code editors. So I can start uh, working on the code. And on the right, I have my Discord server, so I can bother everybody about the things that I'm doing, which is really cool. Now you can actually move this around and change how you view this. You can use your mouse for that, but if you have the Oculus Quest controller, then you can actually also drag it and put it further away. It's a bit disconcerting if you have it mixed up with a uh, monitor that they have here, but this is basically how you set this up. So you can just simply drag this. 
Now, this is a bit better, but still this window and that window, it's a bit hard to read. So what you can also do in the setup is switch to a distance view, and that's by clicking here. And that looks like this. So now these windows are a lot bigger. I think this overall works better for me, actually. And you can still resize these, so you can uh, change the size of these windows here. So you still have some control over what this looks like, but the distance is basically the same. You can change that. So to be honest, this is a pretty neat setup for coding. So now if I work here, I can simply just work in the code just like I would do normally on my computer and that works perfectly fine. And this way, since I'm using Codespace, I'm also not directly dependent on the speed of my Quest 3 chip because this is all running in the cloud. Now, of course, you have to pay for Codespace. That's not free. So um, that's an extra cost that you're incurring if you work in this way. So let me just stop this Codespace because otherwise this is going to be a very expensive video. Another thing that I'd like to show you is that it's also possible to basically work directly with your machine. So you see my uh, iMac here in front of me. And of course, the code is hard to read because, well, the Quest camera is quite low resolution. But what you can actually do is use an app to connect with your machine and then use your Quest as a sort of really fancy monitor. And there are several options for this. So the first one that I want to show you is virtual desktop. And in order for this to work, you need to have a little app installed on your machine so that it detects that this is available. But when you open the app, let me do that, then normally it should detect the machine and then connect to it. So here you see exactly what that looks like. So now I basically have a huge monitor showing exactly just my desktop on my Mac. And I can use controllers to uh, resize this like so, so it can get like really big like this. And also here, as you can see, I'm using uh, pass-through mode. And now, since I'm simply connecting with my desktop machine, I can just use the keyboard and mouse that's connected to my desktop machine. So I can just use the mouse here and I can just type something like this and that just works exactly as I expected to. So this is actually also a pretty neat way of working because it allows you to simply use your uh, quest as a monitor and the resolution is actually pretty okay. There's a couple of other things that you can do as well in this setup. So let me open the menu and show you what I mean. So here we can see this is the Mac that I'm connected to. But what's cool about a virtual desktop is that they have a number of different environments. So for example, one that I like very much is the modern apartment. And this is what that looks like. And then it basically places my desktop monitor on this huge screen, which, well, looks pretty cool, actually. It, sometimes when I move my head, it's a bit jerky, but overall, it's it works pretty well. And, well, this is what it looks like during the day. So there's nothing in the windows. As you can see, there's some artwork here behind me, but I can also switch to an evening mode. And then this is what we see. Yeah, we have a pretty cool looking view there and i think there was an issue with the view during the day yeah that looks a lot better so now we have a day view and you can see that behind me there's a nice couch i wouldn't try sitting on that couch because that doesn't really work obviously but this gives me a cool looking setup to work from and there's more options here like this gaming room is also pretty cool i have a really cool gaming machine there and uh some nice artwork on the wall. So that's really cool. And there's a couple of other ones as well. This one is also kind of funny. It's, uh, there is a interesting poster to the right of me. And I, I have some uh, playing cards here. So you can't, I don't think you can redo anything with this. No, you can't, but it's still pretty cool that this is possible. And then when you close this, well, now I basically have my monitor and then I can start working. Now, the problem with this setup is you can already see this is that I can't see my actual desk anymore. So there is a fake keyboard here, but my real keyboard is somewhere <laughs> around here. So I have to kind of guess where I have to type. And the mouse is also here. I can't really see that. There's no way to, uh, let's say, cut out a portion of the desk so I can actually see my keyboard and mouse. So that's to me, is a bit limiting. And that's why typically, if I use virtual desktop, then I prefer to use pass-through mode. So then I can actually see what's going on on my desk. And I still have my nice large monitor 
a view that I can resize as I please. So I would normally put it, I think something like this seems decent to me. So that's Virtual Desktop. So this is not a free app, it's paid. It costs $20, I think, but to me $20, that's worth it. I think it's a really cool little app to have on the Quest and be able to connect with my machine in this way. So one thing that I mentioned is that you need a Virtual Desktop app installed so that it can connect with your machine. So that's just something you need to take care of. There's another option that I want to show you as well. So let me first close the virtual desktop app and then show you what I mean. So next to virtual desktop, there's also a Meta Horizons Workrooms app, and this is in beta, and you can also use this. And let me show you what that looks like. So it works in a very similar way. So you also have to install a simple application on your desktop machine so that Meta Horizon workrooms can actually connect with that. But once you have that installed, it's pretty easy to set up as well. So let me show you what that actually looks like. So it takes a minute to start up. So as a first step, this app leads you through a little tutorial so that you can actually get set up. So going to say I'm ready. And as you can see, I already have something set up here. So this is what Meta Horizons Workroom looks like and works in a very similar way as Virtual Desktop. And of course, just like with Virtual Desktop, you can also change the environment that you're in. For example, here I'm in a lake. You can't really see that because it's behind the huge screen in front of me, but there's a couple of other options as well, including a pass through option. So that simply shows the screen overlaid on top of the real environment. But let's go back to the lake because I want to show you something really cool that this has that virtual desktop doesn't have, which is you can see here my desk and you see there's an area that's been drawn out here. And what you can actually do is have a desk pass through simply by clicking on this item here. And then this is what you see. So this is something that I really like because now I have my keyboard here, regular keyboard and I have my mouse here. And then I can simply use that just like I would in virtual desktop, but I'm actually able to see my keyboard and mouse. And to me, that's really helpful because that means that I can see where my hands are and that makes typing a lot easier. So Meta Horizons Workroom, that's also an option if you want to have some sort of virtual desktop setup. And then you can just work from your actual machine it's just connected just like with virtual desktop app and this works just like you would expect it to work. So to me, this is also a really nice option, but there are some disadvantages to Meta Horizons Workroom. I found that the app is still a bit buggy. I had several crashes while I was trying to set this up. So this is not ideal. And also it seems there is no simple way to actually change the size of this uh, window. I, I can't really do anything with this. So I'm not really sure uh, how to do that. There are some tabs here. There, is a, there are some settings. Uh, you can see here is my avatar. So this avatar doesn't really look like me, except this avatar looks slightly like me. Maybe it needs more of a beard, but well, it doesn't matter. But I haven't found a way to actually manipulate the size and position of this screen. So I hope that comes in a future update. But overall, this is a pretty nice setup. And I haven't tested that, but they've also added some options for uh, creating a workroom where you can collaborate with people and then you can have meetings and things like that. But I hate meetings, so I haven't tried that. Okay, so some final thoughts. I've shown you three options that actually work that actually allow you to do software development on the Meta Quest 3. The first option that I showed you was just using the browser, opening VS Code in there, and then starting a GitHub code space. To be honest, I didn't find the experience great in particular, the interaction with the mouse was a bit spotty and connecting a Bluetooth keyboard didn't always work. For example, my Keychron K2 that I have here was the keyboard that I prefer to use actually didn't connect with the Meta Quest 3 for some reason. So I was just spending a lot of time putting on and off the headset and trying to get that working, which yeah, that didn't really work all that well. The second option that I showed you was using virtual desktop and then uh, connecting to your machine and then actually having the meta work like a sort of monitor. I found this worked really well, except if you're not using pass through, then it's kind of inconvenient that you can't see your keyboard and mouse. The lag I found pretty reasonable. Uh, I didn't really experience any major issues with lag between me moving the mouse and seeing the mouse pointer. So for me, that worked pretty well. The third option I showed you was Meta Horizons 
workrooms and this was also pretty nice but it also had its problems it was quite buggy it crashed quite a few times although the setup process on my actual computer was pretty simple what i liked from meta horizons workroom is that you could actually cut out the piece of your desk and then you can see the actual keyboard and mouse this was really helpful when I was trying to work with VS Code because I need to see my keyboard and mouse basically. I know some people don't need that, but for me it's really important. One thing that I found lacking in Meta Horizons workroom is that there was no easy way to change the position and size of the screen that you were seeing in the office environment. And this would have been nice to have. So I hope that's coming out in the future update overall in my opinion doing software development directly in the browser in the meta quest is not a great experience and you'll have a better experience if you use something like virtual desktop or meta horizons workrooms i have to remember the name of this pretty long but it's still pretty early days meta horizons workroom is in beta and it shows it's not very stable Virtual desktop works, but I did have some connection issues from time to time. But I feel like these apps are still searching for the right mechanism for interaction. Virtual desktop does a pretty good job at that, but Meta Horizons Workrooms is definitely very limited. So if you do software development on a headset, I think one of those two options, Virtual desktop or Meta Horizons Workrooms is the best option for you. Is it ready for prime time? Not really. <laughs> it's too buggy, too spotty to already be usable. And on top of that, wearing the VR headset for hours on an end is not really comfortable either. So for the time being, I'm going to stick with actual reality and an old fashioned monitor. But I'd like to hear from you. What do you think? Do you think this is how we'll do software development in the near future? Are we all going to wear a VR headset, whether that's a Meta Quest or an Apple Vision Pro? Or do you think that's not going to happen at all and we just stick with monitors like we've always used to? Let me know in the comments. Something that I haven't mentioned in this video is using alternatives to VS Code in the browser such as Replit or Code Sandbox. Or if you're looking for something Python specific, Jupyter Notebooks. I did a video a while ago covering Jupyter Notebooks and whether I think you should use them or not. You can watch that video right here. Now, I'm going to be off and play some Beat Saber. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon.